NLC Live. What's up? It's your boy TBZ back in the place. Thought about rapping my whole talk today, but Tyler and Neil said that we want people to continue to watch these videos, so that would would not be good. <laughs> if I haven't had the chance to meet you yet, my name is Tanner Bizet and my wife and I get the opportunity to to lead real life. That is our student ministry at our Conway, Lo campus, Conway location, Conway campus, and, um, and now our West Little Rock campus as well that launches September 15th. If you have anybody in the West Little Rock area, send them our way, 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. But today we're going to talk about Psalm 37.5. And whenever I first got told to say this scripture, um, to talk about this scripture, I was a little upset. Not actually, but my favorite scripture is Psalm 37, 4, the verse right before it, like in the entire word. And so, missed it by a hair. But we're here, Psalm 37, 5. And so, let me read this out really fast, and we're going to see what we can learn here today. Psalm 37, 5 says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He'll do what? <laughs> well, that's all the scripture says. And so, let's figure out what he will do, and let's figure out what committing to him looks like. Um, the definition of commit is to pledge. My favorite de definition of it that I found on the internet, though, is to promise and to give your all to something. There's something about hanging out with a group of people who are fully committed, who give their all to a project, who who give their all to something to accomplish, who who give their all to a purpose. And I remember whenever I was just a little boy, I wanted to ride this ride at an amusement park that my family and I went to, and I was too short to ride. And so my dad said, Tanner, next year you're going to be tall enough. I'm committed to get you on this ride. And so a full year went by. I grew none. Okay, and so I could see my parents measure me leading up to the trip. It wasn't looking good. And so you know how they'll, um, you'll spray clothes to, to like stretch them out and you'll stretch clothes. They did that to me for a few weeks at a time. I'm kidding. But uh, we did get to the place. It was the morning leaving for this trip. I wasn't tall enough. My dad, he's a great pastor. He's not a great engineer. And so we roll up to the place. We have a, a couple biscuits left over that we had for breakfast that morning. And he says, Tanner, hand me your shoes. So I said, what? He said, hand me your shoes, son. You ever heard of platforms before? And he put about three biscuits in each shoe. And I was just tall enough to be able to ride every single ride that day. I'm telling you, the only reason I rode those rides is because we were committed to get on the ride. God is always looking for people who are totally committed to him and in their relationship with him. In fact, in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, it's proven because it says, but you asked God for help and he gave you the victory. God is always on the alert, constantly on the lookout for people who are totally committed to him. God wants us to be committed to him in every aspect and fully committed to him. But the reason we don't always do that is because of a misconception. And here's the misconception. The misconception is that God wants to be the first thing on my list of importance. Now, that might sound like a good thing. And yes, God wants to be the first, but he doesn't just want to be the first thing on our to-do list that day. He wants to be the first thing in a center of every aspect of our life. That song we always sing around church goes, Jesus at the center of it all. And he means it. Because basically what he is saying is, look, don't just have time with me in the morning and forget about me. Keep me in the center of your work. Keep me in the center of your family. Keep me in the center of your hobbies. And if you do this, the promise will then be fulfilled. So what is the promise? We can find it right here at the very end into the second scripture, Psalm 37, 6, says, If we commit fully to him, he'll validate your life in the clear light of day and stamp you with approval at high noon. Now, that sounds pretty good to me, doesn't it? Basically saying that if we commit fully to him, which many times I have a hard time doing because what gets in the way of me fully committing to God is thinking that I have it under control. But when we realize that God is the master craftsman, that he's been doing this life thing for a long time and we hand it over to him, say, God, I'm committed to you by trusting you. He'll give us purpose. He'll fulfill us and our callings will be identified. And that promise is clear in this scripture. So I just want to pray for you guys here today as we close out and, uh, and see what God will show us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And God, we come to you, Lord, asking that, that God, we would be fully committed to you. Um, God, I pray that we would never wake up 
half committed or God being fully committed to you for the first 30 minutes of our day then forgetting about you but Lord in every aspect we want you to be the center just like that song sings we love you Father and we thank you for the purpose that you have given all of us and that God it would be fulfilled thank you for your promises in Jesus name Amen peace out and I'll see you live y'all have a good one